Now, Rochdale, the Manchester-based club, are rock bottom of the EFL. They currently have 20 points from 28 games, 18 of them being defeats. Played a lot more games than the teams above them that include Gillingham, Harrogate Town and Crawley Town. The crypto lads. But Rochdale do have some pulling power. They managed to get ex-striker Ian Henderson for a stint from Salford, of course another Manchester relative club. Player who once was a good striker, but is now... 38 year old. Only the five goals since his return to add to the 22 that they've scored as Jim Bentley has a challenge on his hands to build Rochdale up. Could he take them to the Champions League? That is the question on everyone's lips today as he gives it a go. And yes, people, we're back again with another rebuild. This time we've got Jim Bentley, who I've made superbly, by the way. All right, maybe it looks a bit more like a brother as we're gonna go with Rochdale, critical financial, critical youth development. Very difficult team to take over. Bottom of the league, not much money, no takeover. Apart from us, as here we are, we'll visit the squad, see how this Bruh. is. It's not good. No beating around the bush. I'll try and get the best squad out of it. I guess this is it. Still not happy. Looking in the academy for some just inspiration. Austin Fleming looks very decent. A striker. I'm getting Alexandra flashbacks to the previous save with Gillingham. If you haven't seen that, give it a watch. As we are going to put him straight in the team. If he gets poached on that, I don't know. Two million as well. Ooh, what do we spend our cash on? As we've got enough scouts... Will one be able to go to a certain location in the world to look for me? This squad is going to be so difficult to turn over. And it's common knowledge you build from the back sometimes. Connor Hazard, the Northern Irish goalkeeper, will sign up as a goalkeeper. I mean, why would he sign up as anyone else? He ain't the only man through the door, though, and it didn't show up on a graphic. But we've signed a big player, 25-year-old Dieng from Australia. Oh, Deng. His name's a lot shorter than I thought, as that looks stronger already. And another huge player through the door is Joseph Champness. He comes over from New Zealand, a winger. Very good rating. That is how the team is looking for the first half of the season, unless we lose anyone. I don't know if I spend much more money, save some for January. As actually, we will grab another player. 18-year-old Raquel May. That's Champness. I was expecting it to be Raquel May. This is the man we've signed. 600,000 from Everton. But the Mexican one. As we've got another academy player through the door. Oli Cairns. He looks fantastic. Two players, Bill and Destined. For the first team, Raquel May, I actually will start. And Diagruya will step out. Feel bad for him. And what's up with the draws, man? This looks like a drawing season. And looking overall at the squad, it looks decent in ratings. But does it show through on the results? Mm, it kind of does. We are two points off the playoffs where Leighton Orient sit. Gillingham, the ex-team up there. Stockport lead the way. And where's Gr Grimsby? You're in 16th. You can see where we've been let down. Four losses. Brilliant. 14 draws. Not so good as we'll check the academy again. I love doing it as look. Declan Lees. That's another player. Some players on some more schedules as well to try and improve them. Do we boost the squad in January? We've got the goalkeeper in, in Lees, but do we go for anyone else? And we don't get a player in now, but we're getting one next season in Mark Harris on a pre-contract from Cardiff. He's a striker and winger, 67 rated. Brilliant addition, as we haven't really had many players go out in the meantime. And we do get a player in this window. We've signed Brim Morris, of course, from my club, Grimsley Town. 63 rated. Is that CDM to go in the CDM role? He'll be in his prime, and that rounds off a very decent squad now. We do lose a player in the meantime, actually. Someone going to a rival in Salford. Sonny James Ball, though. Sorry, James Ball. We're just going to make some money on you. And will the playoffs be reached with this squad? Is it confirmed? Yes, it is. Ooh, only just, though. We sneak in by the skin of our teeth. And actually, no, we haven't. Scrap that. We've still got a game to play. And we easily won it. I simulated it. As we've got in the semi-finals, Gillingham. Oh, no. Decent team on paper. Stockport bottled it there in the playoffs against Carlisle. All the blue clubs. As it was Swindon Town to win our league. With Mansfield and Colchester already going up. Congratulations to those. Let's go ahead and show ourselves, boys. Come on. Get in there. First leg win. Just need a second leg win now. Come on. Wembley awaits. It does. It's a draw. They got a red card. I will take what should be a point, but isn't because it just sends us straight to the final. A final where we face Carlisle, which is a shock to me. 
I honestly thought it would be Stockport. Manager of the month to go with it, and I'm really hoping that the curse doesn't strike on me. Usually when a manager given manager of the month, it doesn't do them well. Hopefully it works for Jim Bentley, and it does! It does! First season promotion, Seriki on loan from the Blades! Rochdale, a League One club again. First time round with Henderson, 53 rated on the bench. Zach Fleming, what a player. I mean, you can say it for a lot of them. Really good. And as expected, Fleming was by far the best player in terms of scoring. He got 22 goals. Joseph got 15. Lloyd, who's actually a... A Rochdale player with the 13 in midfield. Sinclair contributed off the bench. Kelly and Cairns with his 11 assists. Yep, by far the highest at the club. And rating-wise, you can see Hazard in the goal. He has gone under the radar for a free signing from Northern Ireland. For someone nowhere near the most clean sheets, he's done well in terms of goals. Nowhere really close. Fleming in 11th. But still... He's a League One player now. So season number two will start by going into our squad and of course picking Harris up all the way in. What a signing. Bryn Morris as well, strengthening that defence. I'm liking the look of the team. Raquel, mate, mm, it hurts that he's on the bench. Then again, John playing out of his skin. We'll just have to see what happens there as money-wise. Three million. Boom. And we begin with an outgoing Brad Kelly, one of our... Uh, goalkeepers through the academy i don't know he's left it's money to cover the scout that goes out as you might have seen in the top corner who we've just signed this is a huge player for me alex mighton on loan from nottingham forest is like 70 rated absolute superstar saw him at blundell park this season when we played them in the carabao cup what a speedster and the signing of a brilliant winger marco rojas another player from New Zealand, Australia. I apologise that I don't know, but for a free signing, he is our highest rated player. As one I believe will become one is Hans Carlsen as well. Free agent. This guy's 66 rated, but he's 19 years of age. That's two class signings. As I've changed the formation as well just to fit the new lads in, I feel like it's defenders we need the most. We're going to make a double signing here. This is not the player I signed right now. This is Darnell Fisher. He has come from Middlesbrough. Um, of course, released from Middlesbrough. But 70 rated at right back. A lot of promise as we bring a centre half in Jack Robinson. 72 rated at 29. This guy's amazing. Very happy with the team that we've built now. Bryn Morris is the lowest rated player. And I've given the armband to Young Cairns. Because I feel like Fleming will leave soon. He will overstay his welcome. His price tag will just fly up. I've got Carlson and we've got Sinclair now as a striker on that bench. So Cairns will have the armband. Vante Rodney in the reserves. I feel like players will still leave. There's the example. Cameron John going to Antalya Spore. Big chance for Raquel May to step up. Can the Chilean hit hot, hot form? I'm hoping so. As Lee's the goalkeeper in the academy or just come out of the academy... Is now the backup goalkeeper at the overall squad. Good for him. As I do believe maybe one more signing does the job. And we have the last man just walking through the door. Actually, no, that was a play going out in Abraham Ado. He's gone to a jacket on loan, but show us our signing. There he is, Georgie Evans from Millwall. We'll round up our business for this first window. I am aware we did just spend money on a certain Bryn Morris from Grimsby Town, but that was just to boost the money of Grimsby really, wasn't it? Evans on the bench, players out on international duty, which is good to see around our squad, but that is the team playing half of the season. And halfway through the season, we're in the playoffs again in the big league with two points over Sunderland, even Barnsley. What a renaissance from the team. I know one thing though, Alex Mighton has been recalled. I just got a message on that as we need to check the squad. It's very strong. I'm guessing we're going into the Papa John's with the, how the team is looking. Raquel May, uh, it's not hitting the heights I want him to. Maybe we do sign another player there. A lot of unhappy faces don't like that in my team. We start with an outgoing in this window, actually, because Champness has decided to leave us back to Al Nassai. I, I guess it is closer to home to play with Ronaldo for one and a half million. Or just less, as here come the bids. Zach Fleming. Barcelona got one rejected. And Crystal Palace couldn't meet my evaluations with the talk, so I'm going to go straight back into this. I mean, Devante Rodney, he's even better than Fleming anyway. And another player departs on loan, Ethan Brearley, going to Club 
Cluj, is it? I think that's how it's said. On to deadline day, which can be busy for us. And we finally get to buy a player from another club. It's like we've had an embargo. Got the money, signed him up. Here he is. He looks beautiful in black and blue. You probably won't tell who that is. Don't tell that manager's Jim Bentley as well. As it's Tyreek Wright from Plymouth Argyle. 1.1 million for a player with some good potential in him. Sinclair probably does start as the team looks weaker, but we've gone up in money and ratings. And deadline day will slam shut as we reject Cairn's offer. Of course, he's our captain now. So with that, I will see you at the end of the season. Will it be championship in two years? That dream, unfortunately, won't be happening. Bottled it at the very end. Eighth position, Luton walk in the league, or I say walk in, they lost 10 games. Chef Wednesday, Blackpool, Plymouth, Sunderland, Portsmouth. All good luck to you, especially Chef Wednesday and Luton back in the championship. And unfortunately, we will be saying goodbye to Richard O'Donnell, the goalkeeper, and Danny Lloyd, who was very good in season number one. They will not sign new contracts. Not that I weren't trying, as of course Fleming dominates the league again. 29 goals, Harris with 15 in second place, and Marco Rojas. Ooh, what a player. To say I'm disappointed in the captain, Oli Kahn's though, for a 74 rated. Should be a lot better than his stats show. AB gets replaced by Patrick Archer, another player coming through the academy who will get the shot. Raquel may really not happy as well in this squad. Honestly, I've done everything right to getting good. Maybe he leaves, maybe he doesn't, I don't know. But I'm really disappointed with the Chilean. And if you didn't notice right there, I think I am going to go back to a 4-4-2 for next season. Just, if in doubt... Go to the basic Sean Dyche football. And we're back for season number three with, of course, the thumbs down now. We have two million in the bank, which isn't much. Team looking like this on paper. We have to win the title, the board say. As you can see, Fleming is on the bench. That is because I do feel like we'll lose him this window. And the money did go down because we added some scouts. Of course, we did start with actually three million. Three bids in straight away. One from Arsenal, one from Granada, and one from Norwich City. Safe to say, I think we'll be losing him to the Gunners out of all them. And as we just did state, Austin Fleming goes to Arsenal. Good move for him and a lot of money for us. And hey, England won the Euros. Big success, but that looks nothing like the trophy. And we begin with a free agent just to kind of replace him. Thomas Angel. Makes the move over from Betis, a second team, I'm pretty sure it is. Decent player on a free when we've got that much money. Look at that, a loan deal we've actually used. Adam Presley coming from Brentford, only 12 months. And we lose the captain of season number one, Ethan Ebax Landl has gone to Antalya Spore. And we sign another player who was transfer listed from the league above, it's half a million. It's Huddersfield centre-back Tom Lees, he's 33 year old. He's just basically a swap, like for like, for Ebach Slandl. And we also complete the signing of someone in our league, a very experienced midfielder. George Dobson moves across from Charlton. His experience at Sunderland and bigger teams alike. As another experienced player, it's Casey Palmer from Coventry, 1.6 mil. Got the little bit of cash we've got and we're gonna use it. And a big signing from in the league as well is Thibaut Altoine. He's come for, I think it was 2.7. A bit of money, but an 18-year-old 70 rated from Barnsley. And here's our big signing, the 21-year-old American Red Hot striker. It is Hop. I think it's Matthew Hop. He's come from Middlesbrough. Cost us 5.6. Not a bad deal for a 74 rated at least level. Oh, jeez. And he's actually 23-year-old still. Great player. And another season adds for another formation. We're going to go with this. Still feel like more players must be added to the roster. We get another central defender. Wes Harding comes from Rotherham United. Think that shrewd business. And a huge signing coming into the club right now. I can't believe we've pulled this off. We'll keep that till the last as Mitch Clark joins from Accurate and Stanley for some cover. Paul Smith from Leighton Orient to go on the left-hand side. An option if we need to change the team up. A Sam McCallum. 75 rated, has been signed from Norwich City, 7 million. Yes, he's on a high wage for this club. Still, what a signing. That is the team that we're going to take into the season now. We've spent the money very well. Scrap that, I might be working on another so I can't scroll up. But these are the players that we brought in. 
quite a lot. Can we get this final guy over on deadline day? We can. We get an ex-academy Manchester United player returning to Greater Manchester. Another central midfield maestro in Ethan Hamilton from Accrington. That is another player for the bench to cover the centre mids. And before we start this next season, we know we'll be losing these four lads, but... How are we doing halfway through? We are doing a lot better with third. Still, it's not automatics. We are just a point behind and six points off the title. Fair play to Blackpool who are burning it, but we are only two points off falling out of it. We don't want a repeat of last season. The squad ratings, very, very nice. They're coming on a lot. McCallum, Cairns and Hot. Still, we need to keep on going and back it up. And we do lose one player this month, which is Sam Graham, another original. Going for some sun in Spain. And scrap making no signings because we've gone ahead and got Max Bird from Derby County for 4 million. But still a very decent player and it tells me it's an F. We have lost a player on deadline day. It's Tyreek Wright going to Reading. It frees room for Ruven Navarre. He's a free agent. 20 year old and 71 rated if you caught that. Now... We've got a strong squad and a huge squad. And come end of the season, the board aren't fans of us. I've no idea why though. Because we've won the league on goal difference over Barnsley. Maybe because it was too close for comfort at the end, but still we've done it. And one thing I'm going to do this season is check the competitions. Manchester City winning it. Did we get far in this? No, we didn't even reach round five. Swansea beating us in round four, it was. Carabao also won by Man City as Wigan. Won the Papa John's. We were. Were we out in the group? No, we weren't. We were out straight away to Accrington. Bench for robbing their players. As the team overall, it looks brilliant. The ratings are a championship side. Squad is too big at the moment, though. So we've got some trimming to do next season. Top goal scorers are joint in Matthew Hope. And Mark Harris doing very well off the bench. 19 goals and 13 assists. Also, Tyree Sinclair wants to stay. He's been here since day one. That's more like it from Ollie Cairns, but will we lose him? We've got Ollie Palmer as well in that camp position. I don't know what's going to happen going into the championship now. So here we go. We want to get rid of the board being angry at us somehow. They want youth academy players signing. They want five games and... They're very, very specific with the money. The budget is 9 million, so the budget's less in the championship than it was in League One. And we begin by adding a player to the squad. We're going to bolster it with some Brazilian flair. Could be in it for the long haul, this one. Pedro Pinto. He's a left winger. He's 21-year-old, can play up front, 74 rated. And a player leaves in Thomas Deng. He was a signing in the first season, but we'll get money as he goes to Victoria. And Raquel May does leave. It never worked out for him. He goes back over to the South American League. Somehow we've got to get into the Premier League. As look at that, Abraham Ado, another day one goes. But we bring in a big player. Toby Alderweireld is still knocking about. He's coming back to England 36 year old. Yes, it's one of them free agent sign-ins, but that's good experience in the championship. Just imagine like we're helping the old man with his coaching courses. As Ben Nesbitt goes out on loan, one of the youngsters. That's out of the gap for ex-Burnley man CJ Riley. I mean, it looks like Toby Alderweireld has beat him to it. He joins as another free agent. But we're not done there as Ronnie Lopez. The Portuguese winger. What a player this is. He can go on the other side to Pinto. Brilliant signing. We're not done there for wingers. I signed this guy in my Ibar save ages ago. Borja signs. What a player. I signed him when he was a youngster. Now he's 24. In his prime, 74 rated. Decent signings, but you may have seen that someone was missing from all of that. That was Oli Cairns, our club captain. The 20-year-old is going to meet up with Scott Parker at Club Bruges for 29 million. Nice little bit of chunky money into that budget. And another player we bring in is Fabricio Bravo. Bravo, Bravo on us. Bringing this guy in because he's 76 rated and he's 18 or 19 just turned striker. And Max Taylor, one of the original centre-backs, leaves the club as well, so he's not just filling up a loose spot. And Liam Kelly, another original, will leave to Hermannstadt for half a mil. Freeze up room for another centre-half. This is coming from Manchester United yet again. Dishon Bernard, he's gone on loan somewhere. I think it might be a League One club in real life, but we've gone ahead and signed him. Can play centre-back and right-back. Probably right-back 
until Alderweireld's on his way out. We thank George Thompson for his League One help in securing that title, but it's time to go. George Evans, another one of them midfielders. Out with the old. And in with the new. Alfie Doherty, though, he's not a centre mid. He's another left back. He'll go behind McCallum. He's quite youngish as well, similar rated. Or oh, will he go ahead of McCallum? We'll see what I mean in a minute as we've got Campbell who leaves. He was one of the day winners. At least they're all here for the League One campaign as Ivan Sierra. Oh, my days. We've found the messy region, guys. He's 21 year old, 75 or 74 rated. And I did say Doherty might play, but Sam McCallum's talks with Brighton. That was 30 millions broke down. So it's good to keep him, but then again. The money we could have made. And Thomas Angel wasn't here long. He's gone to Union back in Argentina. Two million. It might have been Argentina, as I think this is our final signing. Another central midfielder. Ben Wiles comes across to be the new number eight from Rotherham. 26-year-old. In his prime, it should be. Hopefully, he can be in his prime in the Premier League soon. That completes a very good window for our championship season to get underway. Look at all them players. Well, I thought I were done after the Wild signing, but it still looks like it could do. He's strengthened into the back. As we've got another right back in, we've got Simon Astor from Reading. And we lose Finn Lund, one of the failed youngsters. And a final minute signing. Yes, another midfielder. Thought we could use one. Alex Scott from Bristol City. We'll ignore that it just goes over... The financial fair play rules, I think it's 15 million. Ignore it. That is the team that we're going to take into this season. Hoping for a good run. And Devante Rodney actually left after the bell, which is sad, a first team player. And halfway through the season, it is not good. 14th in the table. And not much money to operate in this window with. Ruben Navarrete leaves for 5 million to Girona. Didn't get the game time. Also same with youngster Patrick Archer. Wanted out and Basel came in. Bryn Morris even going as well to Luton. And Carlson leaves. The Swede will go to Ghent. Maybe we've got some money for a signing. And we do make a huge signing. Nick Pope travels from Newcastle to Rochdale for 9 million. 83 rated. That's because Hazard does want to leave the club and he's had his release clause met. So I'm going to put Popey in. Can he save our season? And we've made it to the end of the season with the board not very happy with us. 11th placed finish with 11 points off the playoffs. We were clear of relegation. A bit harsh to be really angry with me, but then again, I understand it wasn't pushing for promotion. Do we keep our job at the end of this season? If we don't, it looks like we're going out with no cups as well. Now we're near in any of them. It's safe to say one man saved us in particular. Nick Pope literally saving us. Him, McCallum and Scott look the best rated. In terms of goals scored, Fabrizio Bravo at 19 year old just seems like the perfect replacement for the man we lost. Pinto is playing very well and Ronnie Lopez. I thought it was over for him. What a signing he's been. And the board have decided to keep me on, so <laughs> that's one of the positives. Season number two, I agree with the board in gaining automatics. We've got to push for promotion. 10 million's not much, though, you know? Still, I can negotiate with it. Even Nick Pope on international duty as the positions I need. I think I need another central midfielder, another goalkeeper backup, and defenders. And the first signing is a huge one, especially his head, Harry Maguire. Is a Rochdale player. He is staying in Manchester as Jason Knight also joins from Derby. Really wanted to pay money for him last year. Got him on a free. That's potentially the last free is Josh Bowler on his release from Nottingham Forest. And we've even made money making them signings, which fills me with confidence. As we pay money for another player, another defender. <laughs> no, it's not Harry Maguire. You're late again. Jan Bednarek joins from Southampton for just under 7 million. That is shrewd business for me. And another free signing. I wasn't finished there. Albert Ellis, the Honduras international joining Rochdale. And a youngster here in Lewis. Fowler, he's like 69 rated at 18. Just like an academy player that's not come through our academy. A good player to have about as another one is Freddie Woodman. We have now Freddie Woodman and Nick Pope as goalkeepers. This squad is just Premier League. And Casey Palmer, he's been here quite a while now, but he's going to Spain. We lose our 20 year old now striker Fabrizio Bravo. We cashed in a record 50 million for him. I'll take that for the youngster. We've got Matthew Hope and Ellis that I brought in because I did have a feeling we would lose him. And Ethan Hamilton departs as I'm building a mega squad. I'm building a mega squad. And the first bit of the actual mega mega god squad, apart from Nick Pope, 
joins us here in the championship. We've signed the Portuguese Beto. And for reference, this is who he is. I don't even want to talk about the price tag for the championship, but he joins a six foot four striker, 83 rated. He is the easily replacement for Bravo. And he was cheaper. We made the money to get him in. We've got a nice squad here. A nice genuine size. Pinto is scoring goals in preseason for fun. As that is the team we're going to take till halfway through. If we don't lose anyone. We do actually lose someone quite big. Mark Harris does leave. Four million for him. Oh, we sit in very comfortably in the top two. We're 12 points clear of Luton. One defeat all year and second only to Southampton. This looks a brilliant championship season in the making. The team even better. We've got the likes of McCallum coming through. Pope, Scott, Beto. I'm a bit ashamed with Harry Maguire decreasing. But then again... It's Harry Maguire. I don't know what we get done this month. There's a lot of players still here, but I've got faith this team can win the championship. And I've got no one on my list to sign. I'm not going to sign for signing's sake. I'm going to just win the league. And it is done. We've been promoted. Second place, but clear of third. Southampton have just had a one in a lifetime season. 105 points in the championship. We lost a few. We drew a few. But the team has pulled us through. We were knocked out by Bournemouth in the fifth round of the FA Cup. And Aston Villa in the Carabao. This team's still not ready for cup competition, it seems. But I'm really liking the ratings. A lot of 80s round there. Still feel like maybe a winger on the right-hand side. And a centre-half is what we need to try and stay in the Prem. Stats-wise, as you probably expected, Beto is the top scorer. Brilliant work from him. But Pinto, this youth player... Very special. Sierra on the other side, who I said we might replace. He's good. And Alex Scott has 17 assists. A big fan of him when I got him in, and he's really, really played well. Do like him, and of course, Beto this season, who have played the best. We move Premier League Rochdale now up the Blues. And we're back for season number four, five. Not sure, but it's Premier League Rochdale now absolutely love that title. The board want mid-table, but I'm looking at the other teams around us, like Bournemouth, I think QPR, yes, Southampton, Nottingham Forest. The only teams really worse than us who could go down. So I'm slightly like that with it, as we do lose one player already. Ben Wiles will leave straight away out of this window, so central midfield has to be the priority. Maybe Cam and drop Scott back. Also think... We need another defender. Annie Maguire is getting old. And we lose starter Ethan Brearley. He goes to Inter Miami. By starter, I mean someone who was in the original team. And we've gone straight ahead to replace the midfield slot with Jody Shooton, the free agent. I'm more covering the defence because Darnell Fisher is very old. Ryan Giles comes across after his release from Middlesbrough. And it's a good job we got him in because Sam McCallum has left the club. He's gone for 65 million to Villarreal. It adds to the money, which I didn't talk about, which is 85 million now. A lot, but we only did start with like 20. The loss of Sam McCallum hurts, but we've got another player in to kind of, well, not replace him, but be that young star. We've signed Ani Salihovic from Troyes, 19, 76 rated. And the signing of young protege, Rafael Moreno, the Colombian's got a decent rating for 18. Yes, 74. And another midfielder approaching the club right here. Kin and Jewsbury Hall all the way from Leicester. That's his midfield well and truly fitted now, I'm sure of that. Central defenders are number one priority. Wes Harding, one of the players here from quite early days, is leaving to young boys. But all these wages going out of the club, including Ellis, who leaves for six million. Let's a big player in. We've broke the bank for Jose Sutalo, the Croatian defender. What a player. Just under 40 million. But he's not the only defender joining up. What a prospect Magnus Mikkelsen is. His cost is 23 million. You might think that's a lot. He's 18 and he's 78 rated. What a young squad we're building. Straight alongside Sultado in the defense. And Harry Maguire unfortunately drops out. As we did bring a youth player through as well in Turnbull. This team looking very tasty for a Premier League survival cause. And we're still keeping hold of Tyrese Sinclair. He's got a loan move to Benfica. If someone asks him in real life if he'll get that. I don't think he'd think so. And deadline day will shut. We have the players that we have to try and stay in the Prem. And lads, this season. This season is absolutely perfect. We are fifth 
in the Premier League. Just look at the top of this table, though. West Ham are top. Brentford are third. We're fifth. Every odd team is different. Down there is Chelsea and Spurs. The team's looking very healthy. Our youth players, Mickelson, Scott, Slihovic, and Pinto carrying through. Beto has 11 Premier League goals to his name and four in the cup as Pinto's carrying through as well. And checking the academy, another youngster coming through the ranks in Ollie Hayes. As we sign a new player, though, you can see Simon Astor, the first team that leaves for 5 million plus Max Rossi. It's an F. I don't know how, because when I show you Max Rossi, 18 year old, 75 rated, and we've swapped him for a 29 year old. It's absolutely insane how they've given us an F on that. We do lose Freddie Woodman to a free contract. He just wouldn't sign. He wouldn't. And Alfie Doherty will leave to go to Ghent for 5 million. Thank you for the championship memories, Jan Bednarek, but you are gone. And just the one signing in this January window, just a little bit of strength. I got it out, they're all like kind of regens now. He's almost 20 million, but he's 80 rated centre mid. And one out going in Josh Bowler just adds to the price kitty for next year. Ah, end of the year though, we dropped off. We finished ninth. No continental football for us. None at all, because we didn't win a cup. No FA Cup, no Carabao. Looking very much forward to next season. However, I'm pretty sure I got a notification that Beto's had his release clause tampered with. I think he's been bought. Still, we should be able to get a decent replacement in. I'm thinking maybe next season. Of course, we're losing Woodman and Nick Pope is now 36. Goalkeeper and left back could be priority because Solovic can grow more. And losing Beto could be a huge one because he scored 22 goals to keep us in the top half of the Premier League. It's pushing season now, lads. Let's get into the Champs League. Why not aim high straight away? We've been given 30 million to spend already. And the big news is we have lost Beto. Going to be 100 million in the bank, but it's still a bit of a concern for me. An instant signing to shoot up the defense, or the midfield really, is Schuljermand. He's a CDM slash centre back slash centre mid. 83 rated. It says 81 there. And I know we lost better, but I really do need more money. Board want a defender, so what do I do? I sign a striker. We bought this guy in the Everton save. João Pedro. We didn't get enough out of him. In Rochdale, we do. Bought him from Wolves for almost 80 million. And another striker in Rodrigo Ribeiro, a younger Portuguese. Jason Knight does leave the club, the ex Derby man, for 10 million to Verona. And we lose one of our OG strikers, kind of OG. Matthew Hopp was signing as League One days. He's gone to Angers for 20 million. And Thibaut Antoine, another striker out of the club. And Borja Signs has left on deadline day to go back to Spain. I know what I said about the Champions League. But this year for me, just another top half finish because we've got a lot of youngsters. We want to go higher up in the ratings. Still, I wasn't expecting this much of a drop off. And with Nick Pope getting older, we go ahead and sign a new keeper in Carmona from Tottenham for 40 million, I think it was. Not to mention, we've still got hold of Alex Scott in this lineup. No idea how we've still got him, but... I'll take it. And as soon as I mention it, he goes to Championship Nottingham Forest for £141 million. Now, never say that I really overspend in the Championship. God, I felt I did, but now I really don't think I do. Reason behind sale is because I feel like it just allows us to explore this formation of a 4-3-3 a little bit more. And we've done what the board want us to do. We've got a defender in Borged Mayer. We've signed him from Nottingham Forest, so they've got a bit of the money back. And this guy's going to be special. We've signed a player called Charles Lejuen. He's cost 40, oh no, 50 million. He's 81 rated at 17. That is our squad. We've got a really decent team. I'd take a top half finish if we could grab it for the remainder of the year. Oh, and it's not a good ending. We survive in the Premier League by two points. For a team that should be pushing near that end of the table, this season has to be written off. Draw a line under it. And it looks like we were carried by one man and one man only. Zhao. 
Pedro. This season has to be better. They just expect mid table though, which is more realistic. Four to three million's not enough as well. So I think like, I think like we met one signing. We start off with an outgoing kin and Dewsbury Hall's gonna move to Bayern Munich and two youngsters coming in just for squad depth, Carvajal and Cabral. And a big Manchester signing in, which Pep won't be happy with. That's right, Rico Lewis joins the greater Manchester club in Rochdale. Think this squad might be done, you know. It might be done. That is what the team looks like. Should be avoiding a relegation battle. That's a lot more like it. That is a lot more like it. Only the one signing makes so much difference. And I don't really think we make any more signings. I think we go straight into the second half of this season. And come end of the season. Where are we? We finished in fourth. As you can tell, it's a different day. So I've sat on this for quite a while. And yes... We will be playing Champions League football with Rochdale next year. We beat Leeds United by two points to the slot. Now that is success to me. We actually reached the semi-final of the Carabao Cup as well against Arsenal. But that's the furthest in the competition. I will take that on to the next season and our first in the big league. Fun to look at a squad as well as Jao Pedro dominates. Roberto, we've played up front with him. You can see it's paid off. Two goal scorers and Pinto. We can't forget about him. We come into this season losing our captain as well. We lost uh, Max Bird. All we'll be losing him. He's on the bench, but no room for him. Sad to see him go. As for the rest of the squad, you can't see ratings cut of international duty, but... I am very hopeful with this team. And as for money, 101 million. Finally a decent budget to actually operate in the Premier League with. Just look at Forrest. And also it's worth mentioning, Sinclair has left. That is a huge outgoing. The reason I mention Forrest is because we've signed their wonder kid. Brennan Johnson joins Rochdale. He's coming to the crown oil. There he is. Under 40 million, I think he's a steal, by the way. The right-hand side is the position we needed to strengthen. A lot of players going out on loan as well, it's fair to mention. 85, 84, 89, 85... We've got a shot at this season. Edmund Tapsoba from Inter Milan for 40 million is amazing. That completes a defence. Mikkelsen's really good for potential, but he's out of the team. And that team is going forward. I'm trying to scrap my team together from other teams. We've been gifted our Champions League group on deadline day. And that group, to me, looks very, very winnable. Roma will be the biggest threats. Lyon, threatable as well. But Anderlecht, no big team. No Inter. No Milan. No Barca. No Real. No PSG. No business to be done on deadline day because I trust the squad. Now we've kept it. To do the magic. And halfway through the season, eighth in the Premier League, which one, ain't good enough, but two, I don't care. It's the Champions League. Which we are through in. We're against Juventus in the round of 16 in a group we scraped through. Roma out, Olympic Lyon unbeaten. Very lucky, but looking at the squad, I think it is down to our main man being injured. Carmona in the goal was out. Still out for five weeks as well, so. Maybe we get another keeper in. And for the only signing in this window, I'm gonna call on an old friend from Gillingham. From that rebuild, we go ahead and sign Edison, staying in Manchester. 37-year-old, he's always cheap, he's always cheerful, and he's here as a backup. Well, I say that, he'll probably be starting for a while. He's still got the 89 rating, you know. But he does any favours against Juventus, which is the next stop. No signings, and definitely no outgoings, keeping them all hostage. Ooh, and the first leg is a draw. João Pedro and Ribeiro, our goal scorers, leaves that second leg that we're going to sim onto all to play for. Progressing through will be... Us, 2-1, Schulmand and Ribeiro, the CDM and striker beating Vlahovic's late goal to send us to the quarterfinals. Fully honest, I didn't expect us to win that. Fully honest. Can't wait. Oh, Leon next. That's tasty. Revenge for the group stage game. We have a 1-0 lead in the first leg. Semi-finals, please. I have full faith. Come on, they've got a langer in the squad. And it's a 2-0. Brennan Johnson. Do you smell that? No, it's not me. It's the Champions League semi-finals. I'm not going to be checking who's through or anything. We're just going to roll with the punches. As into Milan. You know what? This run we've been on hasn't been bad at all. No City, no PSG, no Real Madrid. We've got a chance. Our team, João Pedro, Ribeiro, 
It's so good enough. Ribeiro's rating skyrocketed us. Oh, we're in dreamland. There's still another leg to go though. Simming, we're even in a final against Man City. Can we talk about that? And the board have a negative opinion on us. I, d I just hate career mode. Fully fit team and oh, 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 oh. Odegaard, Pinto. But you know what that aggregate scoreline means? It means Rochdale from Crown Oil Arena, all the way in Greater Manchester. We'll be all the way in the greatest uh, competition on earth. The Champions League final. Will it show us who we've got? Who the team played? Yes. Oh boy, we got Barcelona. I said we've avoided them so much. The ratings in the team is phenomenal. I said we could get here. And I also said we could win it. We're going to see what happens in this cup. See what happens between the end of the season. Then it's to Barca. Do we have an FA Cup in the bag? We do! Rico, Lewis and Edison using their expertise to get a 3-1 win against the former club. Brilliant win of a trophy as in the Premier League. We secure Champions League football. If we don't win this final, we can go again. And the stats don't lie. roberto has been on it this season. He's beaten Jao Pedro. I'm sure they'll be fine with it. Seven assists each. They're setting each other up. Brendan Johnson's come in to join in. 30-year-old. One of the most experienced. And Pinto has been phenomenal again. The next Vinny Jr. has Shulman stepped in to Botspur. Even from corners. And I've loved John Major. He is one of the underrated ones. And I don't want this video to be five to six working days long. And take three to four weeks to edit. So this is the team that we're going to make. It's simple. Williams needs to come out. Carmona's been in the reserves all along. I haven't even had the strongest bench out, but now it's made. The strongest team, the strongest bench. Here at Rochdale, we don't just go for the FA Cup like Gillingham. We go for the Champions League. Barcelona! Will it be done in season number one? And Sutalo on the TIFO. We've got an advantage here. It's at the Olympic Stadium. This is a good place for a Champions League final. We're in London, still in the UK, and we want that trophy to be blue and black, filled with them ribbons and confetti and everything come the end of the game. I'm sure they'll have a strong team. We have to trust our strong team, though. I saw Adeyemi up front. It's Barcelona. It's Xavi. Versus Jim Bentley. What a matchup that is, by the way. Rico Lewis. He's got a run on to start off with. Jao Pedro with a bit of a turn. He sticks a ball out wide into Rico Lewis. That's a ball flashed towards the middle of the box. Unlucky as Schuldemand. Our Danish DM. Rico Lewis put that across the box. It's an early goal. It's Jao Pedro at the back post and tapping in against Barcelona. The Brazilian set up from Rico Lewis, ex Manchester City. Bringing the experience. Hep called him the new Joshua Kimmich. Big plaudits of Philip Lahm. Who cares? He is Rico Lewis. Full stop. We are Dale as we've got the ball here with Brennan Johnson. Back heel into Rico Lewis. Why not cross it again? It's fallen to us. Oh, he stabbed home again. This is poor, poor goalkeeping. I love this game. Oh, I saved goalkeeping. The number two should have never lost control of that ball. We're celebrating so far. Barca need to push. We need to sit. Sounds like a weird ritual for going to the toilet that I've just said as Jao Pedro again. He's through. It could be a hat-trick in the final. Oh, what a save. Rankow as Brennan Johnson. Terrible ball over the top. Their defenders don't clear it. Maizu with the shot. He falls to us. Ribeiro. Ribeiro. Is this the easiest Champions League final you'll ever see? I'm not counting on it. Barca are still Barcelona, but we're 3-0 up. Adeyemi to run at us as well. Adeyemi's going to backheel that into Ansu Fati. A little bit of a block in there. Still, Adeyemi keeps hold of this. Come on. Got to watch ourselves. Offside in there. Karim Adeyemi out to Ansu Fati. At least he's stuck with them. Pedri as well. The Xavi's managed to keep them. We've got to keep them out before half time. Come on, 3 0 at the break in a Champions League final. You can't ask for any better. Second half started by a bit of passing from Barca, but honestly, I don't know how to highlight their play because it's us through again. It's Jao Pedro looking for a hat trick in a Champions League final. He's inches away from it. Rico Lewis doing the business at the back as well. He's helping towards no shining stars for Barcelona. Whoa, bad tack. Referee, come on. Swiped Rico off his feet and not in a romantic way as that needs to be headed away by Tap Sober. We don't get a nutmeg on Frankie de Jong and he gets a chance to strike. Ferran Torres into Jared Braithwaite there. A block. Referee played a very short advantage. Prima Diemi doesn't get the chance to put the pressure on. Because we're there. We're in the faces. We're going again as Jorginho Rutter 
All the way from Leeds United trying to get past as he has into Ferran Torres. Edison saves it. A good story arc is that he's made the final coming in as a backup halfway through. He might win the Champions League at 37. It's looking more and more likely. Come on, Mickelson. Gives it into Schulman, our Danish man, to just have a crack. The goalkeeper's got it, Franco. Come on. There we go. Rochdale. Whilst I'm in the Grimsby kit, they have won the Champions League. X-Filed and Markham man Jim Bentley has outclassed Xavi, Pep Guardiola's regens, Iniesta's regen, to the Champions League final. 3-0. Cruise through it. João Pedro, a big deal. He's not just been the best one, though. We could name a few. I don't know who's lifting the trophy. It's going to be Sutalo. Of course it is the Croat who we brought in quite early. One of our first 80-rated players. He's deserved this. He's took us to glory. Get in there. Get in the Dale. Them fans. Them fans have been amazing. They've been the staple behind this whole success journey. But I've got to pick... Three players, as usual, who have stood out. First one, lower league, Tyree Sinclair. He was amazing for us. The next one has to be Sultalo himself. Sultalo was one of the highest rated players we brought in for the start, and he stuck with the project. He went with it after countless offers. But Zhao Pedro. Oh, Zhao. What a man. He's enjoying the celebrations as if you want to see more of them. You can see the rebuild we did with Gillingham and Everton and Juventus and Graham Potter's Chelsea. They're all on the channel. And if you want to subscribe, it should be right on my face. Thank you guys very much for watching. And I'll catch you on the next one.